Let me ask you a question. You have to answer honestly, OK? If Arsenal had full strength to, uh, Sunday going into this game, yeah. so Declan Rice and... Um, Martin. Martin Odegaard were fit and ready to yeah. go. Out of 10, realistically, your chances of winning in your head are what? Eight. OK, now without those two players, they're what? Ooh, it's going to be difficult. Six, seven. No, it's going to be tough. Because Spurs, you know what I mean? They've got a bit, of, a bit of a ropey start, but a couple of the performances I think have been all right. When they got beat by Newcastle... That, it was a couple of dad chances. They created yeah. chances. I mean, Nick Pope made a couple of good saves. I know he made a couple of woeful ones Howlers. as well. Howlers. But um, it's going to be tough because it's different if you lose a, a left winger and a, a right back. And a right back. But the fact that you've lost three players. Well, two and a half. Who's the half? Well, who are you saying to three? Moreno. We signed him big money. I know, but he's not played. I get that, but still his option. I know, so, but you, he might. It might be useless. I get that, but it's another option gone. Okay, fair enough. Do you enough. know what I mean? Yeah, so, no, that's fair enough. When you lose three in the middle of the park, you go, ooh, okay. So you, you can have to rotate a little bit, party, maybe Jorginho in there, Trossard, Havertz. I mean, no one quite knows what he's going to do in there, but it, it's huge. It's absolutely massive. But I, I still got faith that Arsenal can, can win the game. But I suppose I've got players. Solanke might be back. Van der Ven, you see how much they missed him against... Although I thought Dragerson okay, did okay against Newcastle. Maybe I'm mistaken, yeah. But that pace that Van der Ven's got allows them to play the way that they want to play. Yeah. And Solanke's that focal point up front. So it's going to be a lot closer than I think people think. What What do you think he will do with regards to his formation in midfield? Will he try and replace like for like or will he do something completely different away from home and just make sure you don't lose? I don't know. Like, so I think Thomas Partey is obviously definitely going to play. He's fit. I think he might go Jorginho and okay. then he might go Havertz. Where, where's he playing Jorginho? Almost a double pivot with, with uh, Party. But, you but think so? Yeah, but both of those players are very de defence-minded. Yeah. So that gives the back four, which is rock solid, by the way. Yeah. See, I don't think you need that cover with yeah. that back four. But it's that like, protection, rock solid. And then Havertz is maybe like the Odegaard-type role. And then it's Gabriel Jesus potentially down the middle with uh, Trossard and Saka or, Mar or Sterling or... You see, that, that team doesn't sound too bad for me. It doesn't, but... Uh, um, maybe I'm thinking of what happened last time when, when Georgina played in the home game against the Emirates, got robbed, Madison robbed him and he just looked a little bit sluggish, a little bit slow. But, I mean, Arsenal need to go into this game believing. But I'm not saying it's over and you heard um, Emmanuel Petit in the package say about if we lose the two games. This is my only thing when I say that it's going to be incredibly difficult and it might derail the season completely is that Arsenal, the last two seasons have been brilliant but have struggled to even hold leads, 5.6 points with Manchester City chasing them. The last thing you want to do now, because if effectively, if Man City win their games and Arsenal was to lose the next two, the gap's eight points. After five games. After five games. Now, it's hard. Where, where's the Man City game? At Man City, the Etihad. Right. Okay. So it's incredibly hard Jeez. trying to hold them off when they're coming up behind you. Now you're giving them an eight point head start. It's difficult. Yeah. You're, you're effectively saying to Arsenal, right, listen, you have to now win every single game and not lose. And that's big pressure considering you've still got to play Liverpool, Chelsea, even, even your draws, lot. Even draws. Even draws. Yeah, which that, is ridiculous after five games. And it is ridiculous, but this is the standard that Manchester City have set. Home advantage counts for how much tomorrow? Uh, yeah, Sunday for Spurs. Count for a bit. They'll be up for it. I've been there. You mean, as a Spurs player, the fans are up for it like mm. crazy. Do you know what I mean? They'll be wanting to put one over on uh, on Arsenal. But we've seen Arsenal go there and handle the occasion really well. But as I said, I just don't think it's going to be as one-sided as people think. And it, Son loves a goal against Arsenal yeah. as well. So. If if Spurs win the game, will Spurs fans be thinking about top four minimum? Do you yeah, think? I think that should be the amb ambition anyway. Mm. I think there's a load of teams. I think everyone on the planet, not everyone on the planet, but a fair few people believe it's City, Arsenal and Liverpool who are the best three teams, which is probably right. Uh, I wouldn't say in that order. No, not much in any order. Right. But they're I, the th I, I would say now, yeah. City, Liverpool, Arsenal. Right. From so what I've seen, those three Those goes. three, which means there's one spot available. Which is ridiculous. Yeah, which is nuts. Nuts. Yeah. Uh, who's key for Spurs? Um, I mean, Madison, he's key. Son's always the, the, the main one. Um, yeah, what's the deal with Solanke, do we know? I don't know. He, I think he could be key as well. Yeah. But I think the, the main one's always Son, isn't it? He, when he shows up, he's so dangerous. Like You just you give him half a chance, he scores that connection with Madison. Van der Ven. I think Van der Ven is, is crucial because of the way that they play. That front foot, high high energy, yeah. halfway line. Just because he allows... He allows he allows them to play that high line because he knows his recovery speed is quick. And we're not blessed with blistering no. pace as a centre forward. So, yeah. I think he's key. How do you think Ange will, will maybe address the fact that you've got two players out and Jorginho's not the quickest player in the world? And Spurs play with the high line. Do you think Spurs would do anything different because of that? Not really, because Ange kind of plays the same way. Yeah. And, and maybe Bazuma, I think he might be out injured. I think he got injured playing for Marley as well. So, um, that might be a... a, a, a position where they might think well, what do we do here but 
it's going to be tight. I think the start's going to be crucial. I think first twenty, the first twenty. I know that sounds quite cliche, but just the way that Spurs come out the blocks fast. If Arsenal can keep possession of the ball, yeah. just quieten the crowd down a little bit, then all of a sudden they start to get a bit apprehensive. Then if Arsenal could take the lead, and then the game kind of takes care of itself. But I want to know illusions that's good, that Arsenal going to blow, blow them away. Absolutely not. One team goes one nil down first. Who's in more trouble? Spurs. If Spurs go 1 0 down, they're in yeah, more trouble. More trouble. Really? Well, look at the last few games that we've seen. One, the, the last one finished 3 2, which but didn't tell the whole story. Remember, Arsenal went up, blew, blasted out the traps 3 0, yeah. bam, bang, bang. And then they were, they were playing catch up for the rest of the game. Mm. So I, I just think. Mm. Okay. Uh, I know loads of you on Avril say, so we'll take a couple of calls now and then we'll take loads after the break. So if you want to get involved, you can. 0371722344 is the number. Patrick Stoll. Hello, Pat. How are you guys? You all right? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Just finished for the Friday. Looking forward for the weekend. Um, what do you do for a living, Pat? Um, work in the plumbers merchants. Work okay. for a company pump centre, selling uh, you enjoy plumbing it? materials in the industry. Uh, been there 26 years. Oh, okay. Can't be that bad. Do you, do you sell um, U-Bends? U-Bends? Yeah, do you sell them? Oh, you must be a retail customer. <laughs> I've never heard them called up. But traps and things like that, yeah. For... Oh, okay, I just can't get mad around that. Yeah. Go on then, what have you... <laughs> what... <laughs> What have you got, Pat? You're a Spurs fan, right? I was, yeah. And I, yeah not look, not optimistic about the weekend, regardless of Rice and Nodigard being out. And listening to Arsenal fans, all oh, don't fancy our chances because we've got two players out. Oh, they must see the depth in squad that they have now that I think is nearly on par with Man City. And they're merely making excuses already. Because if we win, it'd be, oh, we didn't have Rice, we didn't have Odegaard. And if they beat us, then it's, oh we beat you with half a team. I just don't think, you know, Tottenham, unfortunately, are going to be anywhere near Arsenal at the weekend. Wow. Break do, do, Pat, the only thing I'd say about that is when you say about half the team, but you are talking about two of their best players in Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard. They're not just like squad squad depth. Like the drop-off when them two are not there is, is going to be huge because of how big they've been for Arsenal. So I don't think it's necessarily an excuse, but they are losing. It's like if you lost Son and Van de Ven. Which we have done for half a season. And exactly, things. and and it hurt you, didn't it? Well, it, it did, but then ultimately, you know, you got you with Jorginho, no doubt, going to be replacing Rice. You've got um, Trossard, you've got Martinelli to to bring in. You can bring Havertz back. But they are the they, Pat, they are much weaker without Rice and Odegaard, right? Much weaker. They are weaker, but then I don't think we're as strong. Okay. To exp- to expose that weakness, okay. I, d- I don't think Madison's really been on top of his game. He's started sort of, started the last, season well. The season. Start the season he started well. the season well. He started the season well, but we we, we we're still not with all the possession of the ball. It's all well and good having the ball all the time, but if you're not producing results out of that, okay. it's the style of football we play. Okay. We play with nine outfield players in front of the ball. We're open to the break, and I just think Martinelli will potentially. You know, hurt us, should he be on the pitch? Okay, Pat, what would the score be? Oh, Hart would want it to be 1-0, 2-0 or Tottenham, but I think it would be likely we get away with 2-0 to Arsenal. Wow. I don't That's see unbelievable I don't see for a Spurs fan. We'll be it. lucky if we get away with being beat 2-0. I don't see it that way. I know they're open. They are really open, but I mean, that is... Especially for a derby as well. For yeah, no. blast I, think I think it's going to be close. Like a 2-1 either way, something like that. No, I think it'll be goals. I think it'll yeah. be a great game. Mm. I really do. What do you think will happen, Spurs and Arsenal fans? Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.